Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode. As one, we approach the January transfer window. Two, we take on Man City in the Carabao Cup looking for some silverware this season. And three, we also take on Sheffield United in the Premier League. Four, we're using a new skin in game. Here it is. I love this new skin that I found on Twitter. Uh, I saw RDF Tactics was using it and I thought, wow, this looks sick. I want to try it out. And I think it's my new favourite skin. It just seems so, so nice. Um, different too. But I really, really like this skin. So I think we'll probably stick with this one. I'll link it down in the description below. So there is plenty to talk about today. Uh, first things first, drop a like on the video for me and subscribe if you're new around 10. Also, leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm telling me who you think we should be signing this January. I'll let you know a few ideas that I've got personally as to who I think should be signing for the club. But... There are some players leaving the club. I have been analysing a little bit of dead wood in the team right now. And uh, there's a few players that I think should be leaving the club. Players who maybe haven't quite worked out for us or have turned into surplus to requirements. So the first player leaving the club is Debbie. Uh, Debbie just didn't really turn into the player that we thought they were going to. Uh, young French, really solid, but not what we need if we want to become a Champions League team, basically. Uh, bought for £12 million from Twa. We are selling Debbie to, if I can find it on here somewhere on the transfer outs, uh, unhide inactive deals, uh, Leon. Leon for £8 million, rising to £12 million. So we are technically breaking even, but it's a bit frustrating. As you can see also, the other player leaving the club to join Burnley is Vinicius Tobias for £9 million. We are doubling our money on Vinicius Tobias. We bought him from Shakhtar for 4.5. Selling to 9, I think it's a good deal. He's just not really playing games, particularly now that he is the, well, looking at right back, supposedly the fifth best right back we have. But after, well, Felipe doesn't really count, neither does Saliba. Bernal, I don't think Bernal counts. Neto's the best. I'd say Dylan's better than Vinicius Tobias, if I'm honest with you. But Neto's probably the future of the right-back slot, I would say. So it just feels like he's on the most wages, playing the least. It made sense to try and let Vinicius Tobias go. Uh, he also actually came to us and asked for more game time. And I said, no, I'll sell you. And he said, OK, that's fine. So that's why he's leaving the club. And it gives us a transfer budget of £74 million. We're going to have to put some of this into the wage budget as we are minus £10,000 on that. But in terms of money, we're looking very good right now. I might actually adjust the budgets just now before we do anything else. Uh, maybe bring it down to like, I don't know, like... 68 million to have over a million pounds in the wage bill that seems pretty reasonable to me so two players already leaving the club they're confirmed for the start of january i think you'll all agree that they are pretty decent players to let leave the club before we try and make some signings though we need to play man city in the carabao cup quarter final now if we get past man city i really think we have a great chance of winning this competition a really good chance of winning particularly if norwich can beat united and sheffield can beat arsenal that would be so so good so fingers crossed things go in our favor today but this is the team that hopefully will be getting the result for us uh Sintesic, luis felipe and saliba are joined by venetius tobias for his last game for the club uh currently paul dylan and neto are both injured so maybe not quite ideal there uh we've got ostergaard batsner and sandri in the center of the park with bell rankin and sione leading the line it should be enough. Also, before we actually do this, I realise I've not gone through the fixtures from between episodes. Let's, that's quite a big thing to talk about, isn't it? Let's do that very quickly first. Uh, not many games played in between episodes. Uh, you were last here for the 3-0 loss to Chelsea and the 7-0 loss to Arsenal. Not so good. We then lost 3-0 to Southampton. That was poor. But Davidovich and Paul Dillon both sent off with straight red cards in the first half of that game. So it kind of made sense we'd gone to lose that game playing with nine men. We did, though, bounce back against Villa. A 3-0 win against them. 2-2 uh, at home to West Ham. And then a 2-1 win against Leicester was all pretty good, to be fair. And it leaves us ninth in the Premier League table as things stand. A point off Spurs in seventh place. As you can see, we have lost a lot of games. Eight games we've lost this season, uh, which is not great. And we've lost a lot more than the teams around us. The reason we are so far ahead of them, though, or we are ahead of them at least, is because we've won eight games. We've only drawn one game this season. We either win or lose. We don't draw, we win or lose. So really, Southampton have probably played a lot better than us this season. So have Leicester, probably so have Aston Villa, probably maybe even Crystal Palace down there as well. The thing is, they draw lots of games whereas we win them and lose them. So we are lucky where we are right now. We are probably higher than we actually should be based on what we've seen. So as kickoff is upon us in this 
So as kickoff is upon us here today in the Carabao Cup. So, so as kickoff is upon us here today, the first highlight is going towards Man City eight minutes into this game. Now they have the best player in the world, Erling Haaland, in their team. He's absolutely insane in this universe. And uh, Sterling's been put through and some Tessic has pulled him back. Sterling's not gone down, but the referee might be given a penalty here. This feels like a harsh penalty, I think, if it is given. Checking, awarded. Okay, Pineda, please do us a favour as uh, some Tessic has not done us a favour. We could be yellow card in the process too. Haaland steps up. Pineda can't quite make the save. Man City go one up and I imagine they'll go on to win this game comfortably. But what this might do, to be fair, what this might do is give us a bit of time to talk about our weaknesses in the team. But also, let's just, uh, have a quick look at this new look of the skin. Uh, we'll change some of these things around because I don't really care about shot maps and stuff like that. But I do like how you can just like flick to a heat map or the passing network or where shots are being taken and stuff like that for both clubs. Like I think that's really cool. So for me, this is my new favourite skin. But as I was saying, we need to talk about where we need to improve this team. And for me, I think we need to improve the centre of the pitch. As Sione's gone down, hold that thought. Have we got ourselves a penalty here? I think so. If the penalty was at the other end of the pitch for that challenge, this challenge is also a penalty. Penalty award now. Can we actually score it? Sione steps up. The big man. Can he do it? Please. Does it? You love to see it. Now, he's not quite in the goal-scoring form of last season. Only his fifth of the season so far. He got like 20 last season, so we need him to start picking up some goals in the later stages of this season. Hopefully, he does so as he level things up. But as I was saying, I think we need to strengthen the centre of the park, if I'm honest with you. We need to get some better centre mids and maybe a better CDM into the team. Ostergaard's good. But I think maybe someone with a bit more experience, a bit more technical, a bit, a bit more everything really could do the job. And actually, it's a four Man City player that I think we need to be bringing in to that CDM spot. I've got a player on my shortlist that I'll show you later on. I think it will be good enough for us. Oh, very lucky not to concede a goal there as Man City hit the post. Basically, I think the biggest thing for us, I think the biggest thing for us is to progress, we need to make marquee signings. But to make marquee signing, as Man City had a man sent off here, this is good. We need to have a bigger reputation. We have the money. We just don't have the reputation to bring in the marquee signings. As Theo Hernandez is sent off there. If we don't go on to win this game now, it's embarrassing maybe. As we reach half time, 1-1. One, one. Okay, thrash the arms. Not good enough, I'm going to say. Start the second half. Let's get out there. Let's get the result we need. Bell's on a 6.2. Rankin's on a 6.7. Sandra on a 6.5. No one going forward is playing particularly well. So I think actually we make changes sooner rather than later. I think Bell comes off for Randy Ranheimer to become an inverted winger on attack. Rankin stays on for now. Sandra's having a poor game. Let's bring... See, this is the thing. We need someone more attacking-minded on the pitch, don't we? We don't really have many more attacking midfielders, and that's why we need to bring someone else in, I think. Because Bernal and Davidovic are both fairly defensive-minded. So, do we move Ostergaard further forward and then bring Bernal on in that CDM spot? I think that might be the case. We'll try that out. But hopefully... We're going to get ourselves back in this game. Rankin with a free kick. Goes for the shot and actually isn't far wide in the end there. But was never really troubling the keeper. I think the keeper saw it going wide. All the way through that. Come on. We can do this. We can get the result, lads. But it's a Man City goal kick right now. Surely we can beat 10-man Man City. Surely. Ruben Diaz to bring it out from the back. Plays it into uh, Reina. Back to each other. Come on, I think we might take Sione off the pitch in a second. He's not really done much other than score his penalty, and that's like the bare minimum, essentially, isn't it? As uh, Man City playing around the back dangerously. Haaland's won it in the air, but no one else there with him, as they have got defensive players on the pitch now to try and mitigate that 10-man. Oh, no. I've spoken too soon. I've spoken too soon, haven't I? Great save, Penedo. Great save. Thank you. Okay, so a corner for Man City then. McNeil, clear by Tobias. That should be that. Please, no more highlights. Okay, good. Uh, again, 
I think we do take Sione off. He's got his goal, but I think Pedro might be the better option for us later on in this game. We might switch from fullbacks to wingbacks shortly as well, just to really try and get that attacking intent for the final... 50 minutes of the game, we've got nothing to lose. Wing back attack, Suntesic, uh, wing back attack. There's not a whole lot more we can do, really. I'll be honest. Uh, I'm also going to shout encourage to the team for the final 10 minutes of this game. Come on. I know we can do it, and we've got the throw. Is this the moment? Ostergaard. Into the middle, cleared, only as far as Banal. Banal, Vinicius to bite, over to Nick. Nick shoots, saved, dropped. Randy Ranheimer is there. Is it being flagged for offside? I don't think so. You love to see it. We've got the goal just before Randy Ranheimer might leave the club. This is another person we need to talk about. Uh, last episode, I said to you, did I say last episode? I've been scared to tell you, basically. Randy Ramheimer does not want to sign a new contract, and his contract expires at the end of this season. He just refuses flat out, flat out refuses to sign a new contract, and I don't know why. He may have just got into the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, but I have no idea why he hates me so much. And that's a little bit of a bummer to, you know, think about at the end there. But we've won against Man City in the Carabao Cup 2-1. We were helped by a 10-man advantage that we had there. But Brighton beat West Ham, that's huge. Arsenal beat Sheffield, United beat Norwich. If we can draw like Brighton, because they're worse than United and Arsenal. Brighton and this say are actually really, really solid. But we've beaten them before. We've not beat United or Arsenal many times. But we're into the semi-finals, which is exciting. Really exciting as... Um, well, wow. We've now got about 10 days off or so until the Sheffield United game as we head into January. So as we head into January, we'll talk about the players that we think we should be signing. Although before that, we've got the draw for the Carabao Cup semi-final. Arsenal, please do United. United. Wrexham v Brighton. Okay, at home as well, at home. Well, technically not home, we're playing in Stoke still, which I thought was until January. I thought it was like the 6th of the 1st, but no, it's the 1st of the 6th, I think, or something like that. So it's not until the end of the season we move back to our stadium. So we're in Stoke Stadium all season, but that's a really, really, really nice draw. Oh, could we do it? Could we get to a final? I think we could. And also, before we talk about players coming into the club, Randy Ramheimer, who does not want to sign new contracts. I don't get it. He just won't. I'm going to try and persuade him to stay at the club. I'm definitely interested in leaving, so hoping you'll be reasonable about this. What do we say? I mean, basically, I can't say anything that will, like, make him sign a new contract. I mean, maybe we let him go with a buyback clause? Should I say that? He has no intention of staying here. My contract is running out. I won't sign a new one. Try and sell me while you can. I don't understand why he wants to leave. I don't understand what we've done wrong. All we've done is nurture him and bring him into our first team. And the, the, the really annoying thing about this is he wants to go to Celtic, Olympiacos or St Etienne. We'll reject St Etienne because it's a rubbish bid. We'll say yes to the other two. Because I feel like if he goes there, as opposed to going to a, a bigger club, we've got more chance of signing him back. Because I will sign him back at some point. I'm going to try and sign him back at some point. I, I, I'm just so annoyed that he just doesn't want to sign a new contract. I don't understand it. Why? It makes no sense in my head. His happiness. Let's look at this. He is... He's crossed with me because he can't join Reading, Charlton or Bristol City on loan. Right. But he is pleased because he supports the manager in general. He supports me. So why I don't understand this. I really don't understand this guy. I'm literally in his favour personnel. He loves me. I don't und... Oh, I, 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 I can't. I can't. I'm so angry. We will bring him back. We will bring him back. I can just hope he goes to one of those clubs where we can actually afford to bring him back. Because if he goes to like a Man United or a Bayern or something like that we will not be able to afford him. Although it is now starting. It is now starting. Juventus have opened the contract uh, and that's... Well, maybe we won't ever get him back. I hate him. I hate him. I really hate him. Snakes don't hiss. They just don't sign new contracts and there's apparently nothing wrong. 
I don't understand what's wrong or what's made him want to not sign a contract. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the ins, the players that we want to bring in to the club. And I've got a few players here on my transfer shortlist here that I want to bring in. I'd love to bring this Lewis uh, Gabadon guy into the club. I think he's really good. He's Welsh, young, a solid player. The issue is they want 80 to 8 to 134 million pounds for him. And he wants a big contract too that we can't afford. So as much as I like him and want to bring him for the homegrown status stuff, we can't afford him. So instead, I think there's two players that I want to bring into the club. The CDM spot, I think, needs to be filled by Romeo Lavia. Belgian, four-man city player, currently plays for Antwerp uh, after they bought him for 3.6 million. He's got a release fee clause of 12.5 million, and I think he'd be good. If we compare him with our starting CDM of Ostergaard, you can see he's better. Physically, Ostergaard slightly better, but every other area, Lavia's better. So, I think we look to bring him in for the 12.25 million pound release fee clause, make the offer, get it done. I also think we might need another more slightly attacking outlet in our centre of midfield, and I think this Daniel Patrick guy is the man to do it. He looks solid. Currently, I'd say Sandri is maybe our best attacking-minded centre midfielder, and if we compare the two of them, you can see that Sandri is actually better defensively, but... Everywhere else, this guy matches or is better than Sandri and is a lot younger too. Also has a £12.25 million release fee clause. So for me, it makes sense to try and bring him in. We're paying £25 million for both of them. It's a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. Also, if we're thinking about players for the future, um, we're talking about Harvey Harvey Davies, which is a fantastic name. He would be very expensive. Transfer status, 26 to 35 million is what the agent is saying right now. But I think he's one for the future. I think he's really one for the future. Six foot two, 19 years old, 17 tackling, good at everything, a lot of room to develop, is Welsh too. We've got the money right now, why not? It's a risk though. It is a risk. League 2, current ability, Premier League potential, 19 years old. Will he get there? I'd like to think so. Currently playing at Birmingham in the Championship and actually doing very well for himself. So the league team might be a bit harsh, actually. Let's make an offer. How much do you want, Chelsea? We're going to start the bidding at 20 million. They're going to come back with a big thing, aren't they? Tw Ooh, 21 up front. 12 down the line. That's more reasonable than I thought. If we could go like 15... 15 and 7.5, 22 and a half million. They want more money. If we can go 16 and 8, 24 million. Oh, they want more. If we, they want that 30 million, don't they, really? 17 and a half. And 10 for 27 and a half million. Okay. Okay, he's a big one for the future. We'll see how it goes. Right, uh, Lavia is extremely uninterested in the negotiating terms, feels there are more appealing options at Brighton, uh, Roma, and Atalanta. Okay, he wants a lot of money. We're currently paying £67,000 a week to Nick. That's the most we're paying a player right now. How much more is this going to be? You can be a star player. He's also locked in big wage rides as well. This is frustrating. I didn't expect him to want this much money, if I'm honest with you. Oh, hang on. We're suggesting promises, and he won't accept any of them. He wants more promises. Um, oh. Treat the club as a stepping stone, and play you. What's his preferred position? Ball winner? No, let's not do that. We want an anchor man, don't we? Uh, can we make you... Long-term aims of the club are to qualify for continental football 2030-31. He likes that. Okay, <laughs> okay good. Finalise the promises, negotiate contract, 120 grand a week. Right, well, we can't afford that. We cannot afford that. There's no hope. 75 is what I'll do. 75 is what I'll do. He's also locked in release fee clauses, obviously, because that's what the uh, stepping stone is. I don't think this is going to work, is it? He's He's gone up as well in his price. It's just not going to work, this. 
Nope. And this is what I mean. He would be a marquee signing. We just get priced out of wages. Oh, and he's, he's not even worth 100 grand a week. He's not even worth it, which is annoying. Uh, also, Daniel Patrick has no interest. In, why is this all going badly wrong today? Why is everything going badly wrong? At least Harvey Harvey Davis wants to sign for us. This is the guy that I'm, I'm I'm not entirely sure is good enough yet. He will be. He wants to be a regular starter, though. Uh, can he be a squad player instead? Regular st Surely squad. Oh, I've messed that up, haven't I? Okay, so, I mean, I've spent literally, you know, in-game months whittling it down to those two players. Who their agents tell me are very interested in signing for the club. It turns out they're not. Look, I think we have to accept that things aren't going well right now. And, uh... I mean, hopefully, we'll beat Sheffield United with 20 on the table. Hopefully, it, it pans out then, at least for us. Also, Tobias is now gone. He's off He's off of £9 million, so see you later, Tobias. Thanks for your service to the club, but, um, you know, good, really. Also, Arsenal making a big bid for Randy Ranheimer. I mean, if he's going to go, let's try and get as much money as possible, right? Can we suggest £15 million? Uh, they say 7 Can we suggest £12 million? They say seven. Can we suggest ten million for him? They say, we'll take ten million. We'll take ten million for him, and hopefully he goes to Arsenal, never plays for them, and then we get him back. Also, just notice the first leg of the Carrard Cup semi-finals after the Sheffield United game. Let's do it today, right? And now uh, Debbie also leaving the club to join Leon as well. United though have made a uh, eleven million pound bid for Tori Breke. Why? He's not that good. He won't improve that much more. We, we, we take the money, obviously. We take the how much are we sign him for? Uh, four hundred thousand pounds. Yeah, we 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 take the money. He's our backup keeper. We have to sign a new keeper. But I definitely take it. Can we get more money for him? Like say ten million pounds up front, five down the line. And they say, yes, 15 million's good. Right, Tori Breke, uh, <laughs> see you later. We'll take the money. And Arsenal have agreed to sign, or Randy Ramham has agreed to go to Arsenal. Like, we can't get on a new contract. He just won't sign a contract with us. I don't understand why. It's really annoyed me. We'll get him back at some point. We'll take the 10 million, though. We'll get him back. So suddenly, we are now 25 million to the good. Which should be going on those two players that I wanted to sign, but neither of them have signed for the club, which is so frustrating. He's straight in the under-23s as well. He's straight in the under-23s, which is really annoying. We will try and sign him back, I promise you. I can't bore to actually sign him, but we will try and sign him. And so suddenly there's now holes in the team, isn't there? Uh, well, Nick's got to come off, hasn't he? We'll swap him with... Ostergaard and then Bernal comes into that CDM spot. Uh, he then comes off the bench for, I don't know, Salom. Uh, Dylan back onto the pitch as well. He's back from injury-ish, so he'll be all right. Uh, Ewan onto the bench, and suddenly we're looking quite short on the ground, aren't we, actually? Although, no, Neto's back from injury more than Dylan, so Neto comes on then. That's the team, but we need to make some signings now, don't we? We need to make some signings. Okay, so kickoff is upon us here today against bottom of the table Sheffield United. I mean, surely, 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 surely we can get a result here against bottom of the table Sheffield United. You'd like to think so, at least. Uh, as the game is ticking by then, Saliba got a good clearance out to Sandri, forward to Sione. Sione's through, and Sione can't bury that goal. I want to give him the chances this season because he was so good last season, but he's not really taking them, to be fair. I feel like Pedro has to be the man that starts these games from now on, I think. And it's it's painful, especially given that we gave Sione a huge contract. And since we gave him that huge contract, in a full like calendar year since he got that big contract, he has scored less goals than he did in the first half of last season. That's what's really upset me. We gave him the contract... And he's done terrible since then. It's been really annoying. He's on the ball right now. Finds Rankin. He finds Bell. Bell, can he score this time? Even he can't do it. 
Thing is, Randy Ramheimer, he would have scored it. I know he would have done if he'd just signed a new contract with us. Bell into the middle, Felipe in the back of the net. At least we've got a goal. I think, look, the thing is, we beat at Man City. We're in the Carabao Cup semi final. We're one up against Sheffield United. But I just feel down. I feel down. We've lost the best youth player that we've got. We're losing Tori Breck. I'm not too fussed about that one, to be fair, but it means we have to find a new keeper, of course. Three players that we tried to sign wouldn't agree to sign contracts with us. We really do have our backs against the wall here. It is a reminder of how small a club we really are. It's a big reminder of how small a club we really are. As Saliba on the ball, back to Ostergaard, forward to Rankin. Rankin can get this one into the middle. Bell's at the far post. Goal for us. No offside there, I don't think. you love to see it. 2-0. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff right now, as you can see, with... Uh, I'm, I'm getting a nosebleed. <laughs> How is, I've got a pack of tissues here. It's because I've, I've got a cold right now. I think it's probably because I'm blowing my nose so much. I've suddenly got a nosebleed, which is Sione scoring a goal. He loves it. <laughs> well, this episode is just eventful. One second, let me get myself cleaned up. Right, okay, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> crisis averted there. That's... Of the weird things that happened to you mid-episode, that's, that's one of the weirdest. Anyway, we're three and up at half time. This is more like it. Why am I not happy? I'm not happy because like, we can't get the players that I want to bring in. I can't keep the players that I want to keep. But suddenly today, we are actually like acting like a really good team. I'm really impressed with how we're playing today. This is what I want to see more of heading forward in the second half of the season. Neto's ball to Sandri is solid. And Sandri's brought down for a penalty, which Sione should be taking. It should be another goal for him. Should, of course, he put this one in the back of the net. But I think for the next game, he will be replaced. I think, I think we bring Pedro back into the team. Penalty awarded. Also, Gabriel Salom's not had a chance to really prove himself at all between these two. Maybe he deserves a bit more of a chance as well. It's also a red card for the Sheffield guy as well. Uh, second yellow, I think it was. So, Sione steps up, as you can see there. Go on, lad. 4-0. Send to keep it the wrong way. Easy. I say that, actually. That's his second goal today, isn't it? He's got two goals today. He actually, he actually stepped up today, to be fair. So, maybe we shouldn't replace him with Pedro just yet. I don't know. He gives me hope every now and again. I'll leave him playing for the next few games. He won't score for like five games now, I can guarantee it. But we do have a few players playing quite poorly out there. Ostergaard being one, so we'll bring uh, Davidovich on for him. Suntetic are going to come off for Spadina. And anyone looking quite tired? Saliba is so Greco on you come. If we make it five here, which we might do because it's a penalty. Handball supposedly there in the penalty area. I mean, last episode we lost 7-0. Today, could we win 7-0? And will Sione grab himself a hat-trick out of nowhere? No, because the penalty's been saved. Right, that's it. I told you he's not going to score another goal for ages now. I told you <laughs> he's not going to. In the meantime, with 20 minutes or so to go in this game, Sheffield United looking to come forward in the penalty area and they cut it back to Williams, who shoots, and it's a very good goal. They had a man right in front of our keeper who was offside. Apparently not interfering with play. Okay. That's annoying not to keep a clean sheet. So in the end there, a fantastic result for us. A 4-1 win is exactly what we needed. Particularly as we head into the big game. The big game in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. That win, by the way, takes us up to 8th uh, in the table. A point off West Ham and Liverpool. You know, maybe we could get top 7 this season. I don't think we can do. I think we are overperforming given the amount of losses we've had this season and lack of draws, I think, like I said earlier, we are overperforming. We will drop down the table in the second half of the season. But right now, it's quite exciting. Also, the game's in four days' time. So what we should be doing is uh, resting everyone for this. Uh, training, rest. I'm going to give them two days of rest. Oh, and now, to add insult to injury, or injury to insult, uh, our backup left winger, Ewan, is out for four to seven weeks with a twisted ankle. Great. Anyway, for the first leg against Brighton, then we're at home. Tactical meeting, team selection. Suntesic injured, Spadina comes on. It means that Dylan comes onto the bench. It means that actually we can only field eight substitutes for this game because of injuries and suspensions. Sione, he played well last game, didn't he? But would I rather play Pedro this game? No, we leave Sione. Okay, so the game against Brighton is underway. Uh, also, 
They've got Jan Patrick in their team. Of course, our former player, Jan Patrick, we sold him for £12.5 million to Brighton. Uh, so if he's in their first team, that makes me think he's not actually, or that Brighton aren't actually that good. But as a corner gets swung into the middle, I've jinxed it. I've jinxed it. Oh, no. Okay, well, that was not meant to happen. Um, that was really not meant to happen. Come on, boys. We played brilliantly against Sheffield a second ago. It's basically, it is the same team. It is literally the same team, isn't it, I think? Oh, come on. Don't let me down like this. Imagine if we just, like, bottom this now against Brighton of all teams. Yes, in this save file, they are pretty good. They have some very good league finishes. They have had European football. But they're also playing our rejects in centre midfield. Which makes you think they can't be that good. Okay, um, into the dressing room then. Thrash the arms. Terrible so far. Sort it out in the second half, please. We need you to. Although, right at the start of the second half, we make a nice interception. Good. Now, let's get on the counter-attack here. Spadina finds Sandri. Sandri turns to Sione. Into Ostergaard. And Ostergaard finds Sandri. Back to Sione. Back to Ostergaard. Back to Sione. Sione shoots. And if only... Oh, he was just better at shooting, maybe. He could have maybe got that past the keeper. Great move to get in that position, to be fair. But at the end, and that corner was bizarre as well. I'm not quite sure what's gone on with that one, but uh, we'll deal with it. Again, another throw-in. We are trying our very best here to get back in this game, and Bell has got us back in this game. Come on, Kevin Bell. Surprisingly, only his third goal of the season. I swear he'd scored more, but it's usually Randy Ramheimer who scores the goals on that side of the pitch. But it's, uh, luckily for us this time, you know, resulting in us scoring the goals. Uh, Bell scoring the goals. Uh, Look, I'm a bit lost. I did a very long stream this morning. This episode's actually taken uh, nearly an hour to record as well. So I've been talking for like four and a half hours today so far. I, feel <laughs> I need a break. I need a bit of a break later on. I can't wait to get into bed later on. I'm watching The Mandalorian at the moment on Disney+. Plus. Very good uh, show. If you're not watching The Mandalorian, uh, give that one a watch. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so look forward to it. In the meantime, uh, we are looking to stop the attack from Brighton. That's a great ball over the top. If that had gone in, I'd have been so cross. One man on his own, getting the shot away from that far out. That would have been a wonder goal. Let's switch some players over. Rankin having a really poor game. So Lukau, on you come as an inverted winger on attack. Sione off for Pedro, and that's what we'll do for now. Sandrin on the great game either, but we might see if we can do something with him later on. Shouting courage out there. It's a highlight for Brighton who play it out of the back very nicely. Down the left-hand side, into Campbell. Campbell in behind our defence, pushed out wide. Back to Johnson, though, who can swing a ball into the middle. Clear by Felipe, but only as far as the halfway line where Brighton players pick it up, bring it straight back towards us. Back to Johnson, who can put a ball back to Vera. Vera into the middle, offside. I, oh, I don't think it was, if I'm honest with you. I don't think it was. I don't think that was offside. What's the linesman and VAR saying? Probably goal allowed. <gasps> Disallowed. You love to see it. How offside was that? Because this must be tight. Oh, that's so tight. It's so, it is offside, to be fair, but it's very tight. Also, our XG is so much higher today. We do deserve this win. We deserve a win here today. I mean, we'll take a draw. Because it gives us a chance in the second leg. But it leaves it on a knife's edge. It leaves it on a knife's edge. Okay. Uh, oh, it turns out, I thought the, the next leg was like weeks away. It turns out it's just next week. Um, well, we're back then tomorrow very, very quickly for Brighton and Leeds. We'll do these two teams tomorrow, uh, I think, to try and get through to the Carabao Cup final. It's going to be a big ask away from home to Brighton, though. In the meantime, I'll play Blackpool off camera and try and get some sort of deals done for some players along the way, but I don't really know what's going on. Uh, we've got a lot of money, but no one wants to sign for us, which is very disappointing right now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today. Uh, it's been a bit of a, a stressful episode for me. I've not enjoyed recording this one, if I'm honest with you. Um, mostly because we've we've not signed the players that I planned to sign. I spent ages looking for them. The agent told me, yes, they'll sign for you, and then they don't want to sign for us. That's got me annoyed. And then also losing a really key player as well. But also two wins and a draw. That's quite good. I should be happy, but I'm, I'm not. Either way, thanks for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, have a good one. Goodbye.